Good morning. Good morning. Glory to the King. His mercy has kept us. Saved us. Redeemed us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Definitely was a good morning, Brother Robert. A morning to say, um, let's, I can stay in the bed. Good God Almighty. But God calls us to a higher place. We worship Him this morning. We lay our burdens down, God, and we thank you for who you are. You are a wonderful Father. And there's no one like you. God, some of us are weary. Some of us are perplexed. Some of us are in complicated situations. And Lord, I ask that you touch us, Lord. I ask that you bring peace. Peace to our situations. Peace to relationships. Peace to our homes. Peace to finances, God, where you said nothing's missing, nothing's broken, God. Nothing's lacking. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you that opportunities will come. Doors will open, God. We thank you, God. They will swing wide open, God. We thank you, Father. Brother Robert, I don't believe we've ever met, but I heard the Lord say something about a job opportunity for you. Um, if that resonates with your spirit this morning, uh, just put a thumbs up or something, put a clap, some happy, um, faces, um, uh, in praise of God, but I heard a job opportunity. God, we lay our burdens down, God. You said, cast your cares upon you because you care for us. You said your burdens are light. Hallelujah, God. You told us that your laws and your commandments were not burdensome. So, God, we lay down the concerns of our life this morning. And we pick you up. Hallelujah. We pick you up this morning, God. We lay down hurt, we lay down frustration, we lay down anxiety, we lay down worry, we lay down fear, God. We will not walk in fear. Hallelujah. Good morning, Apostle Carter. Glory to God. We will not walk in fear this morning. Hallelujah. We will walk by faith and not by sight. We trust you this morning, Daddy God. Ah, yadadoro, shekadoro, sanedidikor, abasai. I hear international ministry assignments go ye therefore hallelujah preaching the gospel signs and wonders will follow those who believe hallelujah bless you apostle carter hallelujah in the name of jesus do not fear do not fear <coughs> what you got what you ain't got hallelujah god we lay our burdens down to you god for you are able good morning yes lord we bless your name this morning we love you this morning. Oceans, crossing the oceans to do missions work. Good morning, Sister Ruby. Crossing the oceans to do the ministry of the Lord. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Oh, ba 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 sana ne teke. Yes, God. We thank you for the call of ministry. We thank you for the assignments that you give us this morning. We thank you, God, that our call and our assignment is not like anyone else's. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you that you've made us unique. Hallelujah. And how we minister, God. How we are sent into the kingdom and into the world, God. I thank you for your hedge of protection around your people this morning. I thank you for your hedge of protection, God, 
around Apostle Carter and Sister Ruby and Brother Robert and those others who are logged on, God. I thank you for your hedge of protection. I thank you that they are blessed going in and they are blessed coming out. Thank you, God, that they are blessed when they lie down and blessed when they arise. I thank you, Father, that their storehouses are blessed, their fields are blessed, their vats overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we have more than enough. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We lay our burdens down. We lay our worries down. We lay our anxieties down, God. We press into you, God, so that we can hear you this morning, Lord, so that we are reminded that it is finished and it is done. Hallelujah, God. We do not have to worry. We do not have to fear. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that the blessings of the Lord still make us rich and they add no sorrow. We thank you for that this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. Tag, share, invite someone. I promise you, I promise you this is going to be a word that sets you ablaze this morning, that reminds you of the finished work of Calvary. It's not an Easter message, amen, even though we can preach Easter every day. Uh, but this is a message to empower you to understand, bless your name, God, that it is finished. It is finished and it is done. Hallelujah. And there's some principles of, of spiritual, um, how do I want to say this, Holy Spirit? There are things that we, yeah, I'll get into the word. Amen, amen. Bless your name, God. Flow by your power, God. Move by your power. Move by your spirit, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for all who heard their name called this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you that they heard their name called this morning. And we answered. And we found ourselves with breath in our lungs and in our right mind and sight in our eyes. Hallelujah. All of our senses are flowing, God. Our ears, our eyes, our, our nose for scent, our mouth for taste, God. Hallelujah, God. The Holy Spirit is alive and well in us this morning. And we thank you, God. And we love you, God. Thank you that all of our senses, God, hallelujah, as the young people say, is on fleek. Hallelujah. We hear, we see, we feel, we know. Hallelujah. Good morning, Evangelist Johnson. Uh, Yvette, bless, bless your name, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah, God. We love you this morning, Daddy. We love you this morning. We love you this morning. We love you this morning. I don't know who you're going to connect with, Yvette. But before you got on, I heard the Lord say, um, crossing the waters for international ministry. And it's um, a missions trip. So I don't know who you're going to connect with. But God said, just go ahead, put that on your vision board and watch it come to pass. I, I told the story that on my vision board, going to Africa is still... Wait, did I take it down? Okay, but going to Africa, I think I that had been on my vision board for, I went in 2015, it had been up there for eight years. It had been up there for eight years um, before God allowed me to go to Africa. And um, so it shall come to pass, it shall come to pass. Um, the Lord said to tell uh, the person who just logged on, literally just logged on, to not give up. He said to tell you to not give up. Your name hasn't popped up yet. Um, I think I know who it is because I see a purple hat. And you just logged off. But the Lord John, I think. And the Lord said to tell you, do not give up. Do not give up. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Tracy. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. There is a due season if you do not faint. There is a due season if you do not faint. And the Lord said to look for signs to look for signs, to look for the indicators of him moving in your life. Good morning, Sister Yolanda. Hallelujah. He said, um, he said, look for signs. Look for signs of him moving. You will start to see commercials, um, si billboards. Um, people will start to talk about the things that is on your heart to do and, and uh, your desire to do. And it's a stirring up. Um, I was talking to a friend girl, and we're going to get into the word, but I was talking to a friend girl about something that was going on, and I said to her, and this person's name came up, this person in ministry, her name came up, and she had not heard of this person, 
And so I told her, I said, well, here, I'm going to find something and send you a link to watch her or to hear her. She's a beast. She's a teacher and she's a beast. And, uh, and, um, uh, she said, okay. So I sent her the link and I did not watch the link. Didn't watch the link. I just said, oh, here's something. And, uh, she had, was on uh, Daystar, the person in ministry that I, in the past, used to follow a lot. And so she watched her video and then I was prompted to watch the video. And when I watched the video, she literally was talking about what I had been talking to my friend girl about. And it was the indicator to God that I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to do what I said. Now, what we were talking about is not something that I'm, I'm uh, let's see, jumping up and down about. But I know it's what God is going to require of me to do. And so it's the indicators. In corporate America, we had something called key result indicators. They, they are key to you knowing what your outcome is going to be. They are key to you knowing which way to go, what to do next, how to get to the end result that God has placed before you. So it is important that you recognize the indicators. Recognize the indicators this morning. Recognize the indicators. Hallelujah. I wanted to enter into this word this morning uh, to say that there is, um, the word is already blessed and you are already blessed. Your ears are blessed to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you, the church, that the seed will go in and be planted and it'll bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. In due season. And I declare that your fruit will be year long in the name of Jesus, God. It will be continuous and perpetual in the name of Jesus, God. No lack. Hallelujah. Yes, there will be moments that you will uh, recoup and get uh, revived and regenerated. Hallelujah. And as you do that, God is going to reveal. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So take your moments of rest. Take your moments to sit down. Notice I didn't say days and weeks, but take your moments to rest, have a sit down in the presence of the Lord to hear what the Spirit of the Lord needs to say to you about your next. I'm in that place myself. Lord, what's next? What is it that you have for me to do? What am I doing now that I need that you're saying, put that down and, and, and pick this up? What are you saying to me right now, Lord? Hallelujah, Lord. Is it keep going in what you're doing? Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord is up on that. Hallelujah. But there's something else I need for you to do, but I need you to put this on hold. So just seeking God right now. What is it that I am to be doing? Where am I to be doing it at? And so just seeking him. There is something called the law of first mention. The law of first mention. And I'm entering into this teaching this morning about it is finished, it is done. Because it's important that you understand first the foundation of the law of first mention. And this is no matter whatever you're reading in scripture. If it was first mentioned in Genesis and then it's over in Psalms or it was first mentioned in Psalms and now you're over in Corinthians, then you have to respect and understand the law of first mention. The law of first mention is the foundation and base of the original intent of God's word, of why he wrote that scripture, why he, he gave the uh, prophets and the, the Moseses and, and the prophets and the kings whomever to write the scripture that they wrote. And his intent in that text was the first law of mention. And so let me give you an example. So it is written and spoken in the Old Testament for the truth of it to be revealed in the New Testament. Let's say that again. It was written scripture, written and spoken in the Old Testament for the truth and revelation of it to be revealed in the New Testament. Okay? So Psalms 116 verse 10 says, For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore I spoke. This is David talking. He said, I, will, I, I am greatly afflicted, and said in my haste, all men are liars. Now, we also know that that same text 
was all all God's word is God breathed and was written by man as the scripture said as they were led by God to write it. Look, I tell people all the time, Moses just didn't get up and want to write the Pentateuch. He didn't want to write no five books of the Bible, some of the longest writings other than Psalms <laughs> of chapters. He didn't want to write all that. Books, five of them, to hard-headed, stubborn people. He didn't want to do that. He did not, but he was led by God to do it in obedience. He, The Bible says he journaled the journey. That's why I also say men, men can journal. The first person to ever journal was Moses. The first person to ever journal was a man. So men can journal and, and, and write down what they're feeling and what they're hearing the Lord say to them for their lives, for their wives, for their families, for their children. Hallelujah. And so we also know that that same scripture, and this is repeated throughout the Bible, but these these are two I want to give you as an example. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and speak knowing. Okay, remember I said Old Testament, hallelujah, is written, is the foundational and original intent of what God's word was trying to say. It was written and it was spoken in the New Testament, but in, in the Old Testament, but it's in, in the New Testament, when and if it is repeated, is to bring truth and revelation in the New Testament. So the two scriptures that were given as an example was uh, Psalms 116 verse 10. I believe therefore I've spoken, which is what Dave, David said. And David said, listen now, uh, I was going to give up. I, I was going to, uh, I'll walk before the Lord in the land of the living. He said, but my feet was about to slip. He said, because I'm looking at the evil of men. And, and, and I'm looking at the affliction in my own life and in my own body. He said, and in my haste, because I didn't understand, because I didn't have revelation, because I didn't have truth. He said, because of that, I said, all men are liars. So whatever somebody's speaking, he said, no, I wouldn't believe in it. He said, but that was because I was caught up in myself. I was all in myself. I was all in my emotions, looking at the state of my condition and the people around me. But so when you come over into 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, Paul is now saying, listen, we have this spirit of faith. We have this spirit of revelation. He said, and you can believe and what you believe you now speak. What you believe you now speak is not about what you're looking at somebody else doing. And because you're looking at them, you say all men are liars. So I'm not even going to listen to them. No, I am going to believe and therefore I'm going to speak because I have the revelation that it is finished and it is done. Okay, we're going right on in to what God wants me to share with you this morning. Um... There is also something called, uh, have you, okay, so I can't think of a scripture, um, um, verily, verily, okay, um, uh, what's another one, Holy Spirit? I can't think of another one off the top of my head, but there is also, when you hear a scripture or you, or God says something, Jesus says something and scripture repeats itself, verily, verily. Whatever it is, and it's repeated. So, so there is a concept that says second spoken. So, first time spoken, I need you to hear. Second time spoken, I need you to understand that um, this is covenant. Okay? Verily, verily. This is covenant. When he says it twice, it's covenant. It can't be broken. Really, a covenant can only be broken by the person who established the covenant. And in our case, that would be God. <laughs> That's why he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's never going to forget about you. Your name is written in the palm of his hand. Come on, somebody. So the, the understanding, the understanding, when you read something or when you've heard something spoken twice, that is covenant. Two, the number two, means covenant. It's covenant. It, it says it shall be 
let it be. Okay, that's what covenant means. It shall be, let it be. Okay, cut two. Two is also um, the amen. It's it's the it's the amen that you say. I agree. Okay. Now, if there is something that is spoken three times, and I cannot think of a scripture off the top of my head um, where God or the Word repeats itself three times, I, I'm actually thinking about when um, Sam, when when he went to go um, and look for the cloud. I think that was three times. And so, uh, twice spoken, a covenant, three times spoken means it's sealed and it's done. Okay? It's sealed and it's done and it, not only it shall come to pass, it came to pass and it came to pass. So, I need you to follow me. I know, I need you to follow me. Because this is about, it's finished and it's done. And when you understand that when God repeats something, twice, it's covenant, three times, it's sealed, it's done. The Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's finished, it's done. And so, Genesis says, Genesis 1 says, let us, that is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God was already in the earth, creating and moving. And he and, and God and Jesus in heaven, all three are a part, were a part of creation. They were actively involved in creation. And he said, let us make man in our likeness and let and in our uh, likeness and and let them have dominion over the earth. Genesis 2. Um Do I want to do that, Holy Spirit? Okay, so so we know that at the end of the seven days, God said he rested. He was finished. He was finished, and he sat down. Mm -hmm. He had created everything he was going to create, and, and, and that was it. So, finished, finished. Let me, let me say this. The word finished in Greek means to end. Turn this down. It means to end something. It says that something is complete. It is executed. It is it is concluded. Hallelujah. We've accomplished it. Uh, we we make an end of it. it it's, it's the end of it. <coughs> it's expired. Uh, uh, it's 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 um it's finished. It's finished. Uh, it's paid for. Hallelujah. The performance is complete. I need you to stay with me because I know this is going to help someone to understand. It is finished and it is done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me give you this example. Finished and done. You make a cake. You put all the ingredients in it. You set preset the oven. What? 350. Slide it on in there. It cooks. You set the timer, it cooks, ding! What do you say? It's finished! When you were done, when you were kids, Mama, it's finished! She goes in, puts on a little mitten, she pulls it out, puts it on top of the oven, she lets it sit. She lets it sit. And then, she frosts it. Now, though it is finished, hear me, it's finished, it's finished cooking. But now it has to sit. It has to be set. All of everything got to come together and it has to cool down before you put the frosting on it. When the frosting is on it, it's done. And when it's done, you can eat it. Uh huh. Finished and done. You need to understand this. Paul says in, in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, I am convinced of this, that God who began, who began, that's past tense, it's already started, has completed a good work in me before the foundations of the world, a good work in his will to perfect me, to bring to completion until the day 
of Christ's return. Jesus on the cross said it is finished, but I'm telling you, him coming back is done. That's the frosting on the cake. Good God Almighty, that's good God. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, but him coming back into this earth, that is the done deal. That is the sealed deal of God. Hallelujah. That, that's, hey, I'm going home. Glory to God. He's coming after me. He's coming to get me. All right. Okay. He said, he said, um, in John chapter 17, uh, Jesus spoke these words. Hallelujah. As he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, your son also, that your son may also glorify you. As you have given me, Jesus is talking about authority over all flesh. And you give me, give, give me authority over eternal life. He said to as many as you have given me, we grant that. He said, uh-huh. He says, I have glorified you in the earth and I have finished my work which you have given me. Jesus' work in the earth was finished. But his work for the kingdom, for the believer, is not done. <laughs> it's not done because he's still seated in heaven. He's still interceding on our behalf. He's still being our advocate. Hallelujah. He still, when, when, when the devil comes and, and, and gives his report about Tuesday did this, Tuesday did that, Lisa did this, good morning, Sister Lisa, so, good morning, uh, Sister Miles, hallelujah, they did this, Tracy did that, hallelujah, and, and Jesus say, uh-uh, he look over, he look over and he tells God the blood. You got to get, you got to understand the courtroom of heaven. Let me, let me just give you a little, give you a little teaching on the courtroom of heaven. God is your judge. The, the stenographer is the Holy Spirit, and your defense attorney is Jesus. Do y'all not understand this is Trump type and not the one in, 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 in Washington? This thing is solid. You do not have share, tag, invite somebody. You must understand the courtroom of heaven. God is your judge. Jesus is your advocate, your defense attorney. And the Holy Spirit is your stenographer. Everything we're doing is being recorded. But because you are a child of God, it's under the blood. This is why Jesus is sitting and he's saying, Tuesday, ask for forgiveness. Ask for, for repent, repent. So I can say the blood. So I can say the blood is over it. Listen, that's all you got to do. Confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's all he's waiting on is for us to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Lord, I, I don't want to keep doing this. I just need your help, Daddy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope this is blessing somebody. Give us some thumbs up. Give us some, some happy faces so I know you're understanding. When you fall short of the glory of God in heaven, you have an advocate. So the, the prosecutor is the accuser of the brethren. And that's Satan. Uh-huh. That's Satan. And so, so... When, when Satan is saying, you, she's done this, she's done that, I come, you know, honey, throw yourself on the mercy. Throw yourself on the mercy of the court. You ain't got a trip. You said something crazy to your husband or you said something crazy to your wife. You, you're doing stuff. You ain't got no business. You feel like you got the can't help it. But God is with you. Good morning, Sans, Monica. God is with you. He ain't tripping on you. Your defense attorney, your advocate, hallelujah. Come on, think about it. You didn't watch enough court shows. Ha <laughs> ha. When you sitting in the hot seat, when you sitting in your uh, witness chair, your, your attorney is kind to you. So Jesus is your defense attorney. Holy Spirit is over there taking all the notes. Oh, wait a minute. She did do that. She did do that. I'm ripped. I'm rip okay, I'm going back. Yep, she did that. But I see the blood's here. I see the blood's here. Glory to God. She asked for forgiveness. He repented. He turned. He's trying to do it. He goes three days, five days, seven days, three months. He ain't done that in a, in a long time. So the blood. Jesus, God says, case dismissed. Get out my courtroom, devil. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, y'all must know, y'all do know, the devil has a right to go and say stuff about you. Remember, Job, hallelujah, to God. So you must understand. So Jesus said, I have finished my work. In John chapter 17, he said, I have finished my work, 
which you have given me and sent me to do. He said, now glorify me. Now glorify me. He said, now glorify me, God. His work in the earth was finished, but he ain't done. He still is up there praying for you, interceding for you. He's still up there being our advocate. He's still up there Tuesday, Tuesday, ask for forgiveness. Come on now, so I can put this blood on you. Jesus, ha, so I can sprinkle you again. Ask for more anointing. Ask for a fresh filling and a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, just do it. <coughs> That's what he said. And the other thing he has to do is come back. He's not finished. He has to come back. Good morning, big brother Paul. He has to come back for all believers. For everyone who has confessed that Jesus is Lord. He, he's finished, but he's not done because he's still got to come back. And then there's a judgment. There's a judgment that happens with Jesus. And there's a judgment that happens with God. God handles the mercy seat. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, and that's for everybody who ain't called on the name of Jesus. God's going to deal with that. So you, so there's finished and there's done. Yeah. Then we know in John chapter 19, uh, Jesus says, I have accomplished. I have accomplished everything that I have been given to do. He said, I finished it. This is in the earth. Paul reminds us, I finished. I finished. I ran my course. I, I finished my race. As we said, I'm finished. So we're under we're laying this foundation. First mention. First mention. Second mention is covenant. Third mention, it's sealed. It's sealed. It's under the blood. Hallelujah. So all of this, Jesus said, when he remember when he was given the vinegar, he said, It's finished. On the cross, he said, It's finished. It's finished. He said, and, and we know that the day of preparation began. It is finished. I need y'all to get this. Now, that was Jesus saying, it is finished. Now, let me talk to you about it's done. Let me talk to you about it's done. God said, or it was referenced uh, to him, that it's done. It's done. Uh, done, done in the Greek is a word <coughs> that I don't even try to say. Ha <laughs> ha. But listen to this. This is the definition of done, according to scripture. It is the middle. It is to, to cause to be something. It is the become. It's, it's the coming into. It's the coming into. It is, um, let's see. Let me see how to. It's the fortifying of a thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, let me, let me say it like this. Finished is covenant. It's finished. Done is the sealed thing of the Trinity. It, it's it's the it's the thrice spoken, the the three times spoken. It it is it is um. It, it is done. There's there's nothing else. There's there's nothing else that can be done. There's nothing else that can be done. Nothing. Something can be finished. That's the cake coming out of the oven. But when it's done, it's after you put the icing on it, and now it's ready to be served and enjoyed. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. So, um, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 16, that the, um, 16, 17, it says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice from the temple of heaven, this was God speaking, saying, It is is done it is done it is done this is revelations a lot of a lot of the um a lot of the references to done are in revelations by the way revelations chapter 21 god says it is done i am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end revelations 21 verse 6 I will give of the foundation of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He still said, I'm going to give you something if you're thirsty. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he will be my son. When you understand that it's done, God is your God. And you must know that you are his child. You got to know this. It is finished. Listen. Listen now. I need you to hear me. You listening? Okay, here we go. The Bible says that we are heirs 
of God and joint heirs with Christ. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Okay. The minute you confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you were an heir. Okay. You are a joint heir with Christ. He got to share all of that with you. Do you understand? Do you understand? When he said it was finished, everything, the Bible says in Ephesians, I believe it's chapter 1, says that every spiritual blessing has been given to you. Do, you. do you not understand that? Every spiritual blessing has been given to you because it is finished. It is finished. It's finished. Every spiritual blessing has been given to you. And God lets you know it's done. It's done. It's done. It's already done. You, you really, you, you know, I understand, I understand, you know, some of us, when we were little and our parents, were, our mom was making that cake, we ate the batter, honey. Glory to God. The batter was good. But it was something about after that cake had been baked. It's the fresh cookie that comes out the oven. It's finished and you trying to eat it and it's all hot in your hand. And then your mom was like, let it cool off. Jesus, you ain't. Just being greedy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God don't mind us being greedy for him. Ha ha. God don't mind us being greedy for him. Jesus don't mind us being greedy for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you want to taste him. You want to be reminded that he's good. So Jesus tells us that he's already overcome the world. Every tribulation. Listen, it's finished. It's finished. John chapter 16, he says, listen, these things I have spoken. He said, I spoke these things. He said, so that you would have peace. He said, I want you to have peace. He said, I want you to have peace. In this world, there will be tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer, Paul. Be of good cheer, Beth. Be of good cheer, Yvette. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, Devin. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, Tracy. Be of good cheer, Monica. Be of good cheer, Deborah. Be of good cheer, Lisa. Be of good cheer. He said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, Sister Miles. Be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Yolanda, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer, Ruby. Be of good cheer, Robert. Be of good cheer, Apostle Carter. Be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. He said, be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. He said, it's finished. He said, I've already overcome the world. It's finished. Yes. He said, it's finished. He said, you ain't got to worry about this stuff. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. 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 Be of good cheer. It's finished. It's done. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. Good God Almighty. Stop stressing out. Hallelujah. It is finished and it is done. Glory to God. It is finished and it is done. He said, who is he who overcomes the world? He said, you overcome because you believe. Just simply believing. Hallelujah. You overcome simply because you believe. Hallelujah. That he that is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who is he that overcomes you who believe? Good morning, Pastor Holland. Good morning. Hallelujah. This, this is the word of the Lord. It is finished and it is done. Jesus spoke it is finished and God said it's done. You got to see it done. You got to see it done. You got to see it done. I believe, therefore, I have spoken. Twice mentioned. First mentioned, twice spoken, third time it is sealed. Glory to God. So, finish means to bring something to an end. Again, we, let's say that again. It's the end of the matter. It's to put an end to something. Hallelujah. One translation says to destroy something. Col Colossians chapter 2 says that Jesus took the weapons of the devil and made a public spectacle of him by triumphing over him by the cross. He destroyed, it's finished. So no weapon formed against you can prosper. Do you understand? Because Jesus took 
the weapons and destroyed them. Do you do you understand? So you don't, you really don't, we, we really don't have to stress. I know, I know the timing of God can seem like forever. I know I'm with you. It, it can feel like, God, when you're going to come, when you're going to answer, when you're going to come see about me. Good morning, Sister Joyce, First Lady Joyce. Glory to God. When you go come see about me. When you go, but cast your cares. It's finished. It's done. Ha! Huh? You got to see it. You got to see it finished. You got to see it done. For his glory and for his namesake. You must. He said, he says, so finished. Finished is Hmm, that's good, Daddy. One of the definitions of finished is that it is an interior, high-quality product. In, in, interior, inside, mm, it is a high... I never saw that. It is a high-quality product. Ah, what's in you? Good morning, Brother uh, George. What's in you is a high-quality product. It is finished. The Holy Spirit ha -ha, is a high quality product. Remember, I told you, you have been given every spiritual gift, every spiritual blessing that is found in heaven. God has given them to you. It's available to you because you have the Holy Spirit as a believer. And so it, it says here, one of the definitions of finished is the, the work performed after the structure has been put in place, the structure, the foundation, the work performed, what's built on it, and it's finished. You know when they say it's done, when they cut the ribbon and they moved in? Now, we know you move into that house and there's some structural things. You know, it got to settle. It got to settle. But after you didn't move, cut the ribbon, moved in, you sit out on that couch, you say, "Woo, we're done. We're done. We're at home. Glory to God, because the interior is, is of a high quality. The interior is how you want it decorated. The interior, hallelujah, is a good grade. That is one of the definitions of finish. The interior is of a good grade and of a high quality. That's finished. Now let's talk about done. Done is, it's over. There's, there's nothing else that needs to be done. The truth is, we are finished work, but we're not done. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, we are finished work, but we're not done because we have to walk out and work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. We got to walk out this thing. We got to walk out our salvation, which is the sanctification process. And you won't be done. We won't be done until we go through the glorification process. And that doesn't come till we get to heaven. Good God Almighty. So you're finished, Brother George. You're finished. You're finished. You're a finished working God. You're not done. We're all saved. Being saved and yet to be saved. Good God Almighty. We are all saved. We confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and we are saved. We are being saved. That's the sanctification process. And then we are yet to be saved. That's the glorification process. We don't get done until we over there. Good God. Good God. That should help somebody. You try to live perfect. Oh, God, I messed up. I did this. I did that. Oh, I'm a failure. Oh, God. Honey, that's why you, in Christ, you can fall, you can fail forward. Ha ha. In Christ, you get to fail forward. Ain't no failure in God. Sin, but ain't no failure because if you repent, that's covered. You ask for forgiveness, that's covered. Ha. Share, tag, invite somebody. I know this is a good word because it's blessing me. Oh, Jesus is blessing me. Yes, God. So understand, understand, you can live in the finished work of God. You can live in the finished place of God knowing that you are still, don't we always say we're work in progress? Absolutely. Absolutely. You are. That's good news. Just keep being the work in progress. I tell people, and I've probably said this on here, I tell people quite honestly who's struggling with things uh, um, that uh, when they 
If they tell me, oh, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with homosexuality, I know it's wrong, I'm struggling, I know I shouldn't be in this relationship with this woman, she's married to this man, he's married, I struggle, I struggle with drinking, I struggle with smoking, I struggle with stealing, I struggle with fornicating, all this stuff, I struggle, I fly off the handle, I, all of this stuff, now, most of these things we can go and get some therapy for, amen, if nothing else, the word, the Holy Spirit, amen, but, so we struggle. I tell people, I'm glad you're struggling. Because struggle means you haven't given yourself over to it. You're still crying out to God saying, God help me. Ah, that's a good place to be. I know. What? You want people to struggle? No, I don't want you to struggle. But I would rather you struggle crying out to God. Good morning, Sister Terry. I'm glad you struggle crying out to God. Crying out, I, I need to forgive my husband. I need to let that go. I need to forgive my wife. I need to let that go. I need to forgive my friend. I need to let that go. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, and you struggle. We struggle with doing the right thing. Doing the right thing is hard, but it's finished. It's finished. It's already done. He's the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path, simply so that you can get to where he has for you to be. Do you understand your path? Lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Because <laughs> he's going to be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. Hello, hello. It's finished. There was nothing left undone. The curses were broken on the cross. Do you understand? Do you understand? The curses were broken on the cross. He who hangs on the cross is cursed. But Jesus took all of that. And he said, it is finished. Mm -hmm. So done. With, listen, within done is finished. Did you hear me? Within done is finished. I, I know, I know. There's no F and done. There's no S and done. There's no H and done. Uh, right. But within done, when something is done, it is also finished. But just because something is finished doesn't mean it's done. I keep using the cake analogy. It's finished, but you got to put the icing on. It has to settle. It has to set. Let me help you. In your finishedness, if that's a word, of God being a finished work in God, not in yourself, not in Tuesday self, but finished work in God, walking out your salvation, which is sanctification, until we get to glorification, which is in heaven, that's where you will be done. So we're 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 we are, that this is why you are a work in progress. Hallelujah, Amen. Thank you for your transparency, Sister Yvette. This is why we are a work in progress because we're finished, but we're not done. We got the process. We got the pilgrimage. We got to walk this thing out. We got to walk by faith and not by sight. We got to become more and more looking like Jesus every day. I left work yesterday. <coughs> I left my assignment at my school. And I this funk came over me. I'm like, what is going on? Why do I feel like this? And I had to just process through my day. What is this that I'm feeling? God showed me what it was. But I'm reminded, I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress, so are you. This is why we all fall short of the glory of God. And God is not tripping. If you understand, it is finished. Start calling the things in your life, it's finished. Death free, it's finished. The reason it can be finished and not done is because while you're in this earth, you probably require some more, uh, acquire some more debt. Or you still got to pay things, right? So... You could start claiming it. Debt free. Debt free. Supernatural debt cancellation. It's finished. Good God Almighty. It's finished. Hallelujah. I don't have to wait until I get to heaven to say it's done. The Bible says that he can say to us on this side of hell, heaven, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Jesus came, God came down, placed his, the dove on Jesus and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus hadn't done nothing yet in the earth. God says he's well pleased with you. I know, I know you probably got mad at somebody yesterday. You probably cursed. You probably did something you had no business. But if you have a repentant heart, 
if you have a repentant spirit, if you are asking God for forgiveness, God is pleased with you. I mean, my God, David sent uh, Bathsheba's husband to the front line. But when Nathan rolled up on him, he was like, whoa, this is me. Isaiah, Isaiah, put the, put the coal on his lips. I, I am unclean among unclean people. It's okay to recognize we ain't perfect. And you are trying to live perfectly and to please people when you are not done. You're not done. You're trying to live up to something that right now the only person we know that's been in the earth that, that can say it's finished and done to some degree is Jesus. Jesus in his assignment he finished. But in his deity it's not done. Because he still has to come back for us. He's still in heaven praying for us. He's still our advocate, our defense attorney. It's not done. It's so much so that he sent us the comforter to be with us while we are in this process. Ha <laughs> ha! Good God Almighty of getting to done. Done is the end of the matter. It is the finale. Encore. Go to the play. Encore, encore. They were finished. They had performed. They had walked off stage. But you keep clapping. You know what they're going to do? They're going to come out and bow again. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on out, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on out, Holy Spirit. Come on out. Move. Hallelujah. We give you a standing ovation today, Jesus. We give you a standing ovation, Holy Spirit. Come on out. Move in these people under the sound of my voice. Fill them afresh. Hallelujah. Fill them up again. Glory to God. Heal God. Manifest your glory. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. We give you a standing ovation. We say encore, encore, encore. Hallelujah. We throw flowers at you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The symphony goes up in praise. Hallelujah. The people go up in praise, giving you glory. Encore, encore, encore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the God we serve. Bless your name. You are a finished work in Jesus. You are in the process of whatever it is God needs for you to become and God has called you to be. Don't, don't beat yourself up. Don't be so hard on yourself. I think I've shared with you. When I first came into ministry, I was hard on people when I would preach. I, I, I still can have a, a you know, as, the, as a prophet, I still can have a, a direct word. And I pray it's, it's, it's always in love. But, but God had to show me the reason I, I, I preached and taught like that was because that's how I looked at myself. I was hard on myself. I thought God was hard on me like that. God loves you. He's a daddy. He's your daddy. And some of us don't understand that because we didn't have a daddy. We might, we had a father in the sense that his seed helped to get us in the earth. But we didn't have a daddy. We didn't have a daddy who we could sit up on his lap and he would love us and tell us we're beautiful, we're handsome, we're smart. You can be anything. That's the loving, big-breasted part of God. Daddy God. Hallelujah. God is, God is Trinity all in itself. He's God, he's Father, and he's Daddy. Good God Almighty. He's your God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm with you. I want to cry too. He loves you so much. He's your God, he's your Father, and he's your Daddy. And a lot of us interact with God the way that we do because we didn't have a father in our lives. We definitely, if we didn't have a father in our lives, we definitely didn't have a daddy. And so we, we, we're hard on ourselves. When we make a mistake, we think God is going to punish us. And then let's say something bad happens and we equate that to something that we did. But let me help you with something. The minute you say, Lord, forgive me. The minute you say, Lord, forgive me, the blood covers it. And you don't have to beat yourself up. And then all you say is, Lord, help me to not do that again. I want to live pleasing in your sight. I want my hands clean and my heart pure. I want my soul in no way to be lifted up to vanity. I'm a finished work. Somebody, somebody hashtag that for yourself. I'm a finished work in Christ. But I'm, I'm under construction. Hallelujah. And you know, that just hit my spirit. The Lord said, you're under construction. 
You're under construction. You're under, under here. God is working things out in your life. He's perfecting all the things that concern you. Your attitude, your loneliness, your fear. He's got all of that up under here. Now he could just do it with you being exposed. <clears throat> but because he's a loving God, you're under construction. Good God Almighty, that should be good news to somebody. He doesn't want you, um, yes, a finished work in Christ. I am a finished work in Christ. I am a finished work in Christ. I am under construction. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. All at the same time. All at the same time. Glory to God. I'm a finished work in Christ and I'm also a work, I'm under construction. He is sanctifying me daily and I walk out my sanctification with joy and fear and trembling. I wait for the done. Hallelujah. I wait to hear him say it is done. So until then, we desire, oh God, to live a life that pleases you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I want to live a life that pleases you. I want to read this last scripture until you're hearing. And I pray, pray that it blesses you. You are a finished work in Christ. I hear you, sister, Shauna. But God loves you. I had, um, my father was in my life. But my father didn't know how to be a daddy. Let me, let me help y'all with something. The role of a father versus the role of a daddy. I just kind of talked about the role of a daddy. The role of a father, provide, protect, instruct, discipline, set order. Provide, protect, instruct, discipline, set order. And his seed got you here. This is why God is your father. He is your creator. God provides, he protects, he instructs, he disciplines, he sets order as your father. Daddy is the one who loves on you. That extends grace to you, gives mercy to you. That part of a father, that part of God. He says, now, mercy. I'm going to withhold from you what you really do deserve, Tuesday. You deserve this. But I'm going to withhold that and I'm going to extend grace and give you what you don't deserve. I'm going to give you what you don't deserve, which is grace, his forgiveness. And I'm going to withhold from you what you do deserve, which is punishment. And most of us see God as this punishing God, as his hand always being heavy on you. That's not who God is. Does he agree with our sins? Absolutely not. Does he expect us to repent and to stop doing the stuff that we do? Absolutely. But you can cry out. You can cry out for help. Lord, help me. Lord, this situation that, that I'm feeling about not having a father in my life or being uh, distant from my father, or what my father did to me, Lord, heal my heart. I had to pray that Sunday about someone. No, Friday. Lord, forgive my heart. I don't want to feel this way about them. And the best way for, for you to allow your heart to heal about someone that you feel has wronged you, has dishonored you, has disrespected you, have not treated you the way that you desire to be treated or maybe even deserve to be treated. Pray for them. Pray for them. And pray for your heart concerning it. You ain't got to pray, Lord, bless them. Just, Lord, help that situation. Help that person. Help them to see how they treated me and how that made me feel. And God will heal. You will look up one day, I'm telling you, you will look up one day and you don't have those feelings about them anymore. That's how much God loves you. It's finished. It's already finished. Every part, the Bible itself is finished and done. That's why he said, don't you add nothing to it and don't you take nothing away. It's finished and it's done. It's just being fulfilled. Just like your life. Just like my life. God just is looking at us to be fulfilled. To continue to walk out this process with fear and trembling. It is finished. We declare healing in the name of Jesus. Healing of hearts, healing of minds, healing of emotions. We pray healing this morning. 
move forward in the finished work of God. Believe God. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I, I'm not sure who I'm saying it to, but the Lord, uh, I, re I remember years ago when God showed me that cancer, people say, um, people say, the doctor says, you're in remission. Doctor says, you're in remission. And the Holy Spirit said to me, the only remission there is, is for sin. And that word remission in scripture means forgiven. The only remission biblically, because sickness and disease is not of God. I don't know why I'm saying this. Sick, I think I do know why. Sickness and disease is not of God. It's not. So if it comes up on you, the devil's broken the law. Do you understand? He took all, it was finished. He took every sickness, every disease to the cross. It is finished. I am a finished work in my body. In Jesus, I am a finished work. And for sickness and disease to come up on us, you breaking the law, devil. Get back in line. In the name of Jesus. I am a finished work in God. I take my mind back. I take my emotions back. I take my health back. I take it back. I'm a finished work. I came into this world with no credit issues. I'm going to leave this world. And I say you're going to leave them back behind. I'm going to leave this world with no credit issues. Because I declare I'm debt free. I came in to this world through my mother's womb with no art against any man. And that's how I'm going to live my life in this earth. Do you hear me? It's finished. God wants us to live in the finished place of God. Blessed be God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. This is scripture I was talking about. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Ephesians 1 starting in verse, chapter, verse 3. We should be holy and without blemish. Before him in love, having foreordained us unto the adoption through the sons of Jesus Christ unto himself. Listen, according to the good pleasure of his will. It was his good pleasure to choose you. It was his good pleasure to save you. It was his good pleasure to go to the cross. Do you hear what I'm saying? It was his good pleasure to take every whip, every stripe, to take the crowns, to take the thorns, to take the nails. It was his good pleasure. Do you understand? So that he could say it is finished for him, for you, for me. It's finished. It was his good pleasure. He said, he said, making known unto you and unto me the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed, God purposed in God to do. Unto the disp listen unto the dispensation of the fullness of time that is Jesus coming back, and we this dispensation is grace. So the fullness of time that sums up all things, all things are summed up in Jesus. Do you know what it's summed up to? It's finished. It equals. It's finished. It equals. It's finished. It equals. It's finished. That's what's summed up in Jesus. He said. In whom we also have an inheritance. <laughs> All things after the counsel and according to his will. To the end we should be unto the praise. To the end we should be praising God. Till the end of this thing. Till God says it's done. We should be praising Jesus. Hallelujah. Praising God. In whom we have heard the word of truth, the gospel unto salvation. In whom we also have believed. I believe, therefore I speak. Stop speaking stuff you don't believe. Stop speaking things that are not the word of God. Stop it. If it comes out your mouth, pull it back. Uh 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 uh. Retract. I retract that. I'm sick of these kids. I'm so sick of this job. Okay. That's why you're sick. Get on my nerves. That's why you shaking and trembling and got to take a pill. Stop it. Stop it. Gee, that's, remember, I, I quoted, I quoted Psalms 116. In my affliction, I said that all men are liars. In, in haste, I said this. Stop saying things in haste. 
Think before you talk. We all going to be guilty. But if you mess it up, go back and fix it. Retract. I want to retract that statement. I said you get on my nerves. I said that you, you might say that to your husband, to your wife, to your kids. Oh, re retract it. No, you, you don't get on my nerves. You, 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 you can be challenging sometimes. But, but the blood. Grace. Grace. I, I call you brilliant. I call you awesome. I have one little feisty niece. Oh, my God, she's so feisty. And I tell her all the time, you are so awesome. You are great. That feistiness, we're going to deal with that, though. Hallelujah. We're going we gonna to redirect that in a positive direction. Glory to God. Praise people. I think I said this two weeks ago. Praise people in the direction you want them to go. The word goes on to say. He said, in whom we have heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in him we also believe and have sealed the Holy Spirit of promise. Have sealed in which is an earnest inheritance. It is, it is a real inheritance. You got him. Upon the redemption of God's own possession. It was God's possession. The Holy Spirit was God's possession that he gave to you. And it's all so that we can praise him and give glory to him for this cause. Paul said, I will never stop giving thanks. I will never stop giving thanks. So God, we bless you this morning. We thank you for the finished work of Calvary. We thank you for the finished work of the cross. We thank you for the finished work of the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the finished work of your word. We thank you, God. And we bless your name. We thank you for the journey. We thank you for the pilgrimage. We thank you for the process that takes us from salvation to sanctification to glorification. We thank you that we are finished in you. We thank you that we are finished in you. And just as you finished your work in this earth, and Paul said, I finished my work, I've ran my race. God, we want to have, be able to say that. And hear you say, well done thy good and faithful servant. You have finished your course, now enter into your rest. We thank you this morning, Daddy. I thank you that your people will go forward, seeing themselves finished, but still a work under construction. Amen. A work in progress. God bless you all. The Lord says the same. We will be together next week. Amen. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Hello, Sally. Hello, Carlton. Hello, awesome singing man. Hello, Victoria. Hello, Sister Bolden. Hello, Antonio. Hello, I'm sorry I did not see your names as you chimed in. Hello, Sands, uh, Wanda. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Chandra, house mommy. Hallelujah. Hello, Viola. Hello, hello, Anthony. So we bless God today. I love you with the love of the Lord. Again, the Lord says the same. We will be together next week. Amen. You have a fantastic Tuesday.